Here, one for the thumbnail. Get the drippy part right there for the thumbnail. Thumbnail. Oh, yeah. You like that? I know you do. You're babies. You just need pretty colors on a thumbnail and you're good. You little, little key jangling babies. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? What do me and the new Minecraft update have in common? Oh yeah, we're about to play with some copper. Welcome to the Glazer View playlist, where I take glazes off the shelf, I test them for you, we test them on white clay, we test them on- oh, oh. We test them on a white clay, we test them on a brown clay, and most of the time we do at least one combination to see if they're friendly enough to work with any other glazes inside of our homesteads. In today's episode, we're testing Amico's PC-56 Ancient Copper. It is from the Potter's Choice line of Amico, and it is technically food safe. A lot of places in the world don't have these little stickers on their bottles because some places just don't have the bylaws that I have because I live in California. But where I live, they have to put whether the glaze is food safe or not on the bottle. For example, they also have some of them that are non-food safe. And you can see that indicated by the sticker right there. Why is, the, why is the lid so hard to get off? It's almost like somebody's glazing without you on the screen. It's not me. I would never do such a thing. Like a, like a, a robber, like a crook came in and was like, oh, I'm going to play with all these glazes. So that way uh, Dante's followers think that he's being super uh, unfaithful to him with the glazes. You know what I mean? Like, so, okay, never mind. That was a lie. That was a lie. None of that happened. Oh, it's, it's not open yet. Don't worry about it. There's two things that I'm already noticing about this glaze. Number one, it is extra, extra thick. I don't know if that was just my specific bottle or if that's how it is for other people. Please tell me down in the comments below, but it's, it's super thick. And number two, even though it's extra thick, it's drying super fast. I mean, I, I just poured this, poured the rest of them, picked it up. And I want to say about a minute later, it's already, it's already dry. Usually super thick glazes like that will stay kind of wet for a while, but this one just dried up really quick. I think for our combo, we're going to test it out with my Lao Gai Green. Lao Gai Green is a glaze that I developed myself. It is on my Glazy profile. If you want the recipe to it, you can make it yourself at home. That is, if you know how to make glazes. But this glaze is like low key, kind of giving me like a Christmas iron saturation vibe. So I think I can make Christmas colors. I'm sorry I said it like that. I don't know what got into me. I promise you. I'll never do that again, except for in later episodes when I do it. Okay, so as usual, before we put these in the kiln, we're gonna go over exactly what we did to them and what combinations they have and all that. This one over here is our bee mix with no grog textile. This is pretty close to porcelain. It's porcelainous technically. This one over here is our redstone textile. This is our red clay body right here. And this one over here is ancient copper with Lao Gai green on the top of it. All of these have a base of ancient copper, but this one over here just has my green glaze on top of it. Again, I will link that down below for you if you want that glaze in your repertoire. And with that being said, let's put them in the kiln. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's check out the white test aisle first. This is amazing to me, especially since it is not what I expected to get, especially on the bottle. Like usually when you look at the bottle, you have to look at something that's a little bit in the background so you could see like, oh, okay, so it has potential of that but I'm probably gonna get the overall color of this. I layered this, and honestly, when I put them in the kiln, I thought I overlayered, but I do not regret it now because I basically just discovered an accidental crystal glaze out of a bottle. And the crazier thing is that it's actually kind of stable at cone six. I mean, look, none of it really ran off. Even the underbelly right here, like, 
I didn't even glaze it all the way, but nothing on the foot ran down from the foot, even though it's right here, directly like less than a half an inch from the foot. So I'm really, really happy with not only the stability, but these little crystal spots that I got in the glaze itself. To boot, I just tested another glaze that looks similar to this, but it wasn't food safe. This one on the bottle says that it's food safe, lead free, food safe. So I'm so cool with this glaze right now. I actually have to mail off a bunch of pottery to my patrons that support me through Patreon today. So I'm gonna mail this to one of them immediately after this. Like this is going directly to the post office. Although I should remind you that this type of effect sometimes happens on whiter clays. When you look at darker clay bodies, it doesn't usually happen like this. So let's check out our dark, our redstone clay body and see how this came out. This, of course, is the redstone clay body. You can see that I put it on a red clay body by the foot right here. But like I said before, for some strange reason, I usually get way more purity on white clay bodies, but sometimes the iron and darker clay bodies react with a lot of the glazes that I put on it, so I get different effects. So you can tell I didn't really get these type of dark texturized streaks right here on the white clay body. If you look close enough, you can kind of see where it started to make those little crystal bubbles like you saw in the last test tile, but it didn't quite come through. But you can definitely see him trying to survive right there. There's one, there's a good streak right there. You can really see like, okay, it tried. It tried to make those little crystal spots. Didn't quite make it though. I think that's heavily due to the darker clay body. On top of the fact that this is a texturized cup, like this is essentially a cup that I took a tool to and kind of scraped it off to give it a bit more texture and I think that might account for it as well. But these lines where the texture is a little bit more jagged seems to be the spot where a lot of the darker clay body interacted with the glaze itself. So I think this really dark streak right here, the kind of streak that you didn't really find on the other white test style, this one right here, is probably due to the iron in the clay body, but that's just a guess. Okay, I need you to hold on for this one, okay? Cause like the first one was a banger, a certified unit. Second one was good. It was, it was really good. I would take that all day, every day. The third one, I need you to put your pants on because I know you watch these videos in bed and you're like pantsless half the time and you might, actually defecate yourself so i'm gonna need you to put at least a diapy on here it is do you like it i've been saving it saving it for our anniversary it's our one year did you think i forgot this is a phenomenal combo mostly because of this type of cascade of color right here which almost dripped off of the shelf this, this was almost an oopsie doodle but it was not an oopsie doodle it was more of a bang noodle what even is a bang noodle i don't i don't know this is a phenomenal test tile. I think it's mostly because of the mixture making this cascade of colors right here with the Lao Gai Green and the PC-56, the ancient copper. But it, this was almost a cleaning project for the morning instead of a recording video. I almost had to clean off my shelves, but it turned out phenomenal either way. Just look at those colors. The rest of the cup where the glaze didn't really touch looks pretty normal. Like the rest of it looks kind of like this one right here. You can see it's, it's exactly the same on a white clay body. But the part in which it kind of dripped a little bit with the Lao Gai Green, one of my green glazes, just made this fantastic cascade of colors. You can see the copper, you can see a bit of blue, a little bit of green, a bit of copper. You can really see a tinge of everything that's in the glaze recipe and how it combined with ancient copper. It's fantastic. Here, one for the thumbnail. Get the drippy part right there for the thumbnail, thumbnail. Oh, yeah. You like that? I know you do. You're babies. You just need pretty colors on a thumbnail and you're good. You little, little key jangling babies. I'm probably gonna end up giving this one to my patrons like now, today, and I'll put this one inside the store. We'll save it for the next store upload. I, I think the next store upload on my website, earthnationceramics.com, probably come somewhere 
in like mid-February. I got, I got a lot of stuff to do and I'll upload about 40 pots. This will probably be part of that pot or I'll just make more of these. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really, really, really enjoyed doing this glaze. That sounded weird. Please redo that, Dante. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed testing this glaze with me on the white clay, brown clay, and the test style with the combo. I really enjoyed it. I actually think because I can't make this glaze myself, or rather I don't know the recipe, I'm probably gonna buy another bottle of this. There's every now and then Amico makes a glaze that I'm like, I cannot make that. I need to buy that because I do not know the chemistry or the recipe to it. And I can't just call up Amico and be like, um, hey, can you give me the recipes to a really cool glaze you have? Usually I'm pretty picky about the fact that some of the glazes don't come out exactly like how they are on the bottle, but none of these came, like none of these are the same color. This didn't come out the same color as the thing on the bottle. This didn't even, this is the closest one and this isn't even the same hue of red as it came out on the bottle. And this one definitely doesn't look anything like, well, a little bit right there, I guess, but not, not really. None of these look like what it says on the bottle. This is probably the first time on this playlist that I have been happy that it looks nothing like how it comes out on the bottle. Usually a pet peeve, I'm pretty relieved about it right now, not gonna, not gonna lie, because it turned out way better. But thank you Dirty Products for joining me today. Don't forget to click all the YouTube buttons, because every time you click the like button, a kiln load comes out good. Thank you for your patronage. <laughs>I would never test glazes without you, my little sugared lumpkin cupcake that I totally don't test glazes without, I swear.